last year. But I thank God that he allowed us to be able to come over to another year. Amen. Amen. God is good. I, I, and for those who don't know, I um, had another knee surgery. And uh, it's on my right knee this time. But it's okay because God is healer. He is a healer. Amen. Amen. And I'm able to, to still do what he has for me. I was down for a little bit. Um, but not down in spirit. But I was down as far as physical body. But I'm able to move around a little bit. And when I'm able to do so, I will do so. Amen. 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 To Pastor Davis, the shepherd of this flock, thank you for allowing me to be able to once again uh, grace this pulpit to be able to give you what the Lord has given me. Amen. 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 All right. How many people are glad to be here today? The Lord woke you up. There you go. Thank you for that smile. Praise the Lord. You ought to be happy because he woke you up this morning. He's able to get up out that bed. Might have had some aches and pains. I know I did. I'm not even going to lie. But I thank God for allowing me to be able to open my eyes. This morning, to see a brand new day and bring me out. Amen? Amen. As we have read into our hearing, uh, the, the text is coming from Psalm 34, 1 through 8. But our focus text will be verse 8. And it's going to be, and it is, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Amen. And for those of you who will be writing what the subject is, I want to make sure you write it correctly. We're going to be talking about 2020 vision. All right? So it's going to be this. 20 slash 20 in 2020. You're going to write it right? And then you're going to put a dash and say, a new beginning with a restored vision. Amen? A new beginning with a restored vision. Now, the question becomes, let me just kind of look through the congregation and look at the faces. Ah, oh, so I see a lot of us have glasses on, including myself, amen? That means what? We need some help being able to see, right? Anybody here with 2020? Oh, some of us have contacts. Or well, maybe some of us have not yet gone to the eye specialist to check our vision. So nobody here has 2020. Ah, that means we need help with sin, right? We need help with our sin. So it's an awesome thing to be able to see things clearly. How I many of you know it's not good when you have to squint? You can't hardly see you. It's stumbling and and things of that sort. I was at a memorial service, I played for a memorial service yesterday, and um, the person couldn't make it through reading um, a poem or obituary or something yesterday because she um, just couldn't, she was so overwhelmed. So her sister came up, which was unexpected, she didn't expect to do that, but what did she forget? Her glasses. And then the other thing was the programs hadn't arrived, so she was reading it from a cell phone, which makes the print even what? Smaller. So she was stumbling through the whole thing, having to apologize and things like that. So how many of you know, how many of you know sometimes you need some help with your vision? Amen. Amen. You need some help with your vision. Amen. But it, it's, it's an awesome thing to be able to see things clearly, either physically, emotionally, mentally, and guess what? We need to see things spiritually too. More clearly. More clearly. Um, sometimes when I go to the eye doctor, go every year, I try to. It seems like my vision gets worse and worse and worse. It's like the prescription gets more stronger and more stronger and more stronger. But it's okay because at least I have my eyesight. Amen? Amen. At least I'm able to see. Well, in Psalm 34, we all know that David you know, started out as a shepherd boy. and But as he grew older, he encountered a lot of negativity. A lot of bad things was going on in his life. Amen? But God still had his hand on him. But Psalm 34 is an individual hymn of thanksgiving from David, sung on the occasion of the deliverance of his very life by God, perhaps as the ultimate word about God's help to those who are in need. It's a, it's a summary of all that can be said about God's help in the face of oppression and hurt. How many are familiar with oppression and hurt? Are we not going through that now? Amen. Individually, collectively, not just here, not just in your homes, 
but in the world. Amen? Amen. But who knows? God is going to get us through it, right? Yes, Those of us who read this uh, text and hear these words, we ought to take heed to it because it is a song of thanksgiving for deliverance. And we thank him for bringing us through our own oppressive situations. Amen? Don't we thank him for that? He gets us through everything, doesn't he? Sometimes we become so down that sometimes we're like, come on, God, where are you? You know, we've fallen on our face and said that many times. But we all still know deep in our heart that he is there. He doesn't forsake us. Amen? Amen. The psalmist offers praise to God. If we go to verses 1 and 2, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. No matter what the circumstances are, no matter what I can't see, what I want to see, what I'm not able to see, I'm still going to praise God for it. Amen? In spite of it all. Hallelujah. Because God is going to get us through. But you got to do what? You got to have faith and you have to believe and you have to have trust in God to know that he's going to do it. Amen? Blessing and praising God are the common themes for David in this particular text and for many of his texts. The word bless comes from the same root as the Hebrew word ni, K-N-E-E. -E. Thus, to bless is literally mean to bend the knee, to kneel before a sovereign God. The words praise and boast come from the same Hebrew root word, the word that occurs in the phrase hallelujah. Thus, praise will be in the mouth of the psalmist in the most being. It, it should be deeply rooted in your heart. When you get ready to praise and worship and bless God, you ought to feel something. It ought not to be a chore for you. You ought to be able to go down on your knees, or if you can't get on your knees like I can't get on my knees, it's okay, because God knows my what? He knows my heart. He knows your heart. He knows where you're coming from. He hears you no matter what physical position that you're in. Amen? He's always right there. How many of us really, 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 really spend quality time on our knees, those of us that can. You don't have to raise your hand, but just think about it. I, I find that a lot of times before I became physically challenged with not being able to use my knees, that when I was able to, I just had a more close feeling with the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? It's like being able to, like when the Lord first called me to preach, I'm past, I don't know if you remember this, but I was a musician here. And I had the key. I used to come in here every morning before the crack of dawn. And all I would do was put that cross on, the lights. And I would lay prostrate before the Lord. Intimate time with the Lord. Prayer closets, you may have one. You may not. It doesn't have to be a physical closet. But wherever that space is that you call my time, my space with God, is so important. So many times we are so in such a rush that we forget, okay, I'm going to pray and thank God for waking me up this morning, then maybe I might put something in here during the day, and then I'll pray and thank him for the day when I get ready to go to bed. But how many of us, we know that we live in a time where we got to stay prayed up. Amen. Stay prayed up. Amen? Stay prayed up. If you feel like you may have been just a little relaxed in this portion as far as getting on your knees and blessing and praising God. Um, let, let's, this is a new year. We're, we're in the second Sunday of a new year. We've got a lot of time, Lord willing, that to get things right that we didn't get right last year. Amen. A new beginning for restored vision. Amen? Amen? Sometimes we say things, but we really don't do what we say. So let's try this year to say what we mean and mean what we say. Amen? Amen. Say what we mean and mean what we say. But the only way we're going to be able to do that is what? We've got to lean and depend on God. Amen? Amen. Lean Lord. and depend on Him. A new beginning with a restored vision. David states his reason for offering praises unto God. He says in the next verse, verse 4, he said, I sought the Lord, and He answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Oh. Then he went on to say, This poor soul, this poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. I could put I for me. When you're reading scriptures, put yourself in the scripture. Put yourself in the scripture.
scripture. Amen? Make it more personal. What is your reason for offering praise unto God? I'm sure each and every one of us has many reasons for offering praises unto God. Matthew 6.33 says what? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. You got to seek God. Amen? God created us to what? Glorify him. We should at least give him the respect of blessing him, praising him, glorifying him, and worshiping him. Amen? Amen. 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 Two more common things of David occur in the next verses. God delivered and God saved David when he cried out to him. Amen? Amen? God showed up and took care of David right in the midst of his troubled times. That's just how good our God is. He's you good. ever had any troubled times? He's I good. have. I've had plenty of troubled times. But I pray to God and I ask him to, make, to bring me through it. Amen? In order for this to happen, we must first exhibit our faith and our complete trust in God, just as David did. Amen? When we see things our way with our physical eye, how many of you know that God doesn't always see those things the same way as we do? I'm, I'm going to take a pause right here because I want to share with you for a few minutes a brief testimony that relates to the subject for this morning. Amen? Amen. For the past couple of years, I've been having some transportation issues. Yes, you'll see me driving in a truck and coming here, but you don't really know the story behind it, and that's not what's really important. But what is important is that my physical eye had an eye on a vehicle for two years. I really love this vehicle. It was a vehicle that Cadillac is, is between the year of 2006 and, and 2009. Well, it's right the Cadillac SRX. And I don't, I don't like the new luxury one that has a little round back. I like the one that had the square back. And I'm like, Lord, 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 I know I'm going to depend on you to give me this car. And I really needed it like two years ago because I've been going through some things. And within those two years, I really needed another vehicle. I needed another. I tried to save money, but how many of you know when you save money, something comes up and it drains your account, and here you got to start all over again. You got to help the kids out. You got to do this. You got to do that. All of a sudden, you don't have it. So I said, "Okay, Lord, I'm going to trust you." And yeah, there were times where I became a little frustrated and discouraged because incidents would come up. Didn't have transportation at all, but yet God brought me through. Well, 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 y'all, to get to the point. Get to the point. That's all there. Yesterday. Yesterday. That's why I got a grin all across my face. I was able to drive off the car lot in Baltimore with a 2008 Cadillac SRX three row. Right. Almost fully really loaded and don't have a large car note. I praise God. What? I praise God on the lot. Nobody questioned it. They already knew what was going on. I had to get my praise on, get to shed some tears and everything. Right, it's in my name. It's my responsibility. It's my car. My car. It's mine. Signed, sealed, and delivered by who? God. Hallelujah. So why not give him? Let me put my kids back so I know where they are. <laughs> I do not want to lose these keys. I bless God because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew your strength. Amen? They shall mount up with wings as eagles. I, I, be, I believe, I believe, I believe. If you don't believe the word of God, you're just short. You're short because you can't do anything on your own in this life. Amen. You've got to have somebody to depend on. You can't always depend on physical man, your physical best friend. You cannot always depend on your physical best friend. Sometimes you can. But when I was out there showing up, I was like, won't he do it? So many things yes, came sir. to mind. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. I saw what I saw with the physical eye during those two years. It was not my time. God made it plainer to see it with the spiritual eye. Amen? Yes. I couldn't have driven off that lot without recognizing that it was the spiritual eye more so than that physical eye. Amen? Amen. Verse 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Hallelujah. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall 
direct your path. Amen. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know every time I speak, Amen. I'm going to say, God. he knows the plan that he yes, has God. for your life. Amen? We don't know what that plan is, but we have to trust and believe that God has a plan for us. You know, he got to have a plan for us because he caused us to be born into this world. Amen? Amen? We didn't come into this world just to be here. Everybody here has a reason for being here. And you have to know what your purpose is. Amen? Amen. Amen. God is good. God is good. The word taste in this text is translated to mean to try something by experiencing it. In this text, David is encouraging the readers and hearers to try God's goodness for themselves and experience it as one would taste new food. Tasting is one of our five senses. Seeing is another. We see the goodness of God every day. New mercies. Every day. Amen? Amen? What we see today, we may not have seen on yesterday, and we may not see tomorrow. Yes, God. Every day is a new day. Amen? Every day is a new day. It's all because of God. Yes. God, we, Psalm 34 encourages us to experience God for ourselves and to open up our eyes and see the goodness of God that's all around us. Let's look at things differently this year. Let's just look at things differently this year. This is the 12th day of the new year. Some things from last year may have caused us to lose hope. May have caused us to maybe table some ideas, table some dreams, table some visions. But again, let's refer back to Matthew 6.33. It said, but seek ye first, what? The kingdom of God. And his righteousness in all things shall be added unto you. Amen. Amen? In order to have restored vision, Amen. you've got to go back and clean up some things. Those things that can be cleaned up. How many of you know some of those of us that wear glasses? you got to clean the glasses sometimes. Amen. You can't just throw the glasses up on your face and think, oh, okay, i got glasses that's going to make me see better. Sometimes the glasses get foggy. Sometimes the glasses get dirty. We've got to clean them to be able to see better. Amen? Amen. So sometimes we might have to go back and revisit that vision from last year. Revisit what we had our sight on. Revisit all of that through God's eyes. Not our eyes, but through God's eyes. Amen? Amen. Then we're able to do some revisions. We're able to start all over again if we have to. If we put God first in everything that we say and do, and watch, watch, just watch. Watch your physical and your spiritual eye as God begins to do great things. He will do great things in your life that will blow your mind. Amen? Amen? Even though I was in prayer, adversary still tried to creep up. He even crept up at the dealer's office yesterday. I'm like, I'm coming from Washington, D.C. Please tell me everything that I need. Because I'm not traveling back. That was 100 plus miles to get to where I had to go. Why, when I got there, oh, we need proof of residence. I said, I was joking with him, but I was dead serious. Do I look like I carry the lease in my purse? Sir! He said, well, I know we have your ID, but we have to prove that you live there. Okay, Lord, what, what, what can we do? Uh -huh. It worked out. Technology. Print out the phone bill. Boom. You know, oh, well, now we need um, three months um, um, uh, bank statements. Technology, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Press the button. Okay, because can you imagine back in some times ago, technology didn't have that. You had to have physical paper. But I said, no, 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 Lord, you're going to work this out. And he most definitely worked that out. He most definitely worked that out. Most definitely. He did it for me. I thank him. I bless him. I praise him. I just glorify him for all that he has done, he is doing, and I know for the things that he is going to do. I just, I just step out on faith just like that. I just step out on faith just like that. If you step out on faith like that, you're going to see that he's going to blow your mind. You're going to see a new vision. It's going to be restored. Amen? Amen. Seek a new beginning this year and pray for restoration in your vision. Amen? God will show you some things. Let's make a concerted effort to do things better this year. How many of us have, well, I don't write resolutions. Does anybody still do that? It's okay. I mean, I don't know. I don't write resolutions. I just I pray about everything. Like, Lord, I need you to do A, B, C, and D. Help me get through this year as we do blah, 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 blah. Amen? He's the one that's going to get us through the next year. He's the only one that's going to get us through it. Who wants to be able to see better? 
Who wants to be able to see clearer? Everybody should want to be. Amen. Amen? Amen. So if we commit within ourselves that we're going to have a new beginning and we're going to work on having a restored vision, then who knows? We might be able to take these glasses off. God can do anything, right? Amen. With all things. With God, all things are possible, right? Amen. All things. And sometimes, even with the glasses, you do have to take them off for a few minutes. But sometimes it's like, wait a minute, I can't see this like this. Let me pull this off for a minute. God puts us in a position where we have to take away from the physical eye so that we can see the spiritual eye. Right. Amen? Amen? Am I able to have a witness for that? Amen. We can't always see it with the physical eye. We've got to get deep down in our physical mind, our physical hearts, and our spiritual hearts and know that God is the one that does things for us. But we have to believe it. We've got to stay on our knees. We can't get on your knees. Stay in prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord at all times. Bless all the time. Even if somebody makes you angry. Bless, Bless God. Watch what you say. Because once you put it out there, it's mm -hmm. hard to retract. Amen? Amen. Amen? Bless the Lord at all times. All time. Pray all the time. Yeah. Glorify God in everything that you do. In everything that you say. Give God all the glory and all of the honor because he is truly worthy to be praised. He is the one that is able to keep us from falling. Amen? He is the one that is able to bless us, to keep us, and to be able to, in a world that we're living in now, we need the Lord. Amen? A world that we're living in now, even though there's stuff that's going on on in the far countries, how many of y'all know we're right in the middle of everything? The president lives right here. Everybody's going to come right here. There's no running. Where are we going to go? we got to pray. Be ready. Stay prayed up. Because I know that I want my eternal life to be in heaven. Amen. Amen? Amen. So we need to live right for God. Whatever your vision is, God can see you through it. He can make it plain for you. Amen? Man can't make it plain. But God can make it plain and plainer. Do you believe that? Yes. I pray and I thank God for the blessing of a new beginning. And for him restoring my vision in things in the spiritual eye. And if you continue to pray, he will restore your vision with the spiritual eye of a new beginning in 2020. Glory. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glory. Glory to God. Are y'all happy today? Yes. Amen. Even though it rained so hard, I thought a tornado was coming through and the wind was blowing so bad during the night. I had to put my window down, couldn't even have the window up because the water was coming in. But I said, you know what, Lord? It's all right. It's you okay. You got it. Because you got it. You got it. Man. You got it. God is good. God is awesome. Shall we sing? Glory. This is a time where there may be someone. Um, you know, if you're not quite sure who God is, who Jesus is, and even the Holy Spirit, we need to give him respect too. Because Jesus left the Holy Spirit within us for us to be able to function after Jesus went up into heaven. Amen. But if you're not familiar with who he is and what he can do, you can come forth right now, give your hands to Christ. Amen. And ask him to help you to see you through. You want a new beginning in your life. Amen? But you already know who Christ is. You already know who God is. You may want to recommit yourself. This is the time to be able to do that too. Sometimes we have to look at ourselves and evaluate some things and say, you know what, Lord? I really do want to recommit myself. I want a new start. I want a fresh start. I want a fresh start with you. And I need you to help me along the way. And it's okay to come forth and do that because you know what? We've got Pastor Davis. We've got deacons. We've got persons everywhere. You've got friends within the congregation that can help us on this journey. Do you believe that? God is awesome. From the youngest to the oldest. You're never too young. You're never too old. As long as you know and understand who Jesus Christ is and what he did, what God did, how he sent his son down here to die for us, all you have to do is come forth and just, just put your hand in God's hands. Amen? Is there one? Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Do you love him? Oh, how I love Jesus. Thank you. 
Lord. Hallelujah. Because you first love me. I have eternal life. I'm already living my eternal life. I accepted him in my life. I'm living my eternal life right now. Amen. Once you're saved, you're always saved. Amen. Might fall and slip and slide and things like that, but you always got God. Always got your back. Amen. 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 Praise God. Sunday school will be up here. All right. Sunday school will be starting at 915 and it will be held up here in the sanctuary. Amen. I thank God for the blessing. I thank you for your support. Continue to keep me and my family in your prayers as I think about you all all the time. But God has ministry and I'm out doing ministry and that's what he wants us to do. Amen. So we pray for ministry. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to be able to come together and worship and praise you and be able to hear a word from on high. And now as we leave this place, we ask you please be in the midst of our surroundings. Let no hurt, harm, or danger befall us until we're able to meet together again. In the mighty name of your son, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.